Hello there and welcome to this presentation where I will walk through how we can use PMP Modern Search for People Search. My name is Kasper Larsen and I am a uh, one of the comp contributors on the PMP Modern Search project. I'm also a senior solution architect with Philomine Denmark and just uh, freshly minted uh, Microsoft MVP. So what is PMP Modern Search? Um, about 10 years ago, Microsoft decided that they would like to change uh, what was back in the old days, something that looked like this, and they would like to update the, the, the graphic interface to something that's a bit more, more modern. And in the process, they, they kind of uh, lost uh, the search web parts because in the classic uh, sites, we had as before web parts that we could use when we were creating new uh, search uh, solutions. That was the search box, search vertical, search refiner, and the search result web part, where we can uh, customize those uh, to fit the purposes uh, that uh, we were trying to fulfill. Uh, but Microsoft didn't uh, provide any updated web parts for um, SharePoint uh, Modern, so uh, the community stepped up and provided uh, a set of web parts which we can use today to uh, space, to, to create new search-based solution um, based on uh, Microsoft uh, Search and also SharePoint Search. So why would we use uh, some web parts to, to do some uh, search for people? If we go into our uh, site today and we look for Dell, for example, for instance, which is one of the people on this, uh, and if we won't see her in the library. We'll go out here and have a look. She's not uh, shown on the site collection level, but she is shown on the uh, tenant level where we can see where in the people uh, tab and also in the old uh, where we can see information about the people that uh, is on this tenant or the users. So, well, this should be sufficient, right? Uh, well, not in, in many cases, we would really prefer to have this kind of information available elsewhere in our solution, not just out here in, uh, in the top bar on the site, uh, sorry, no, sorry, on the tenant level. So that is the reason why we want to use uh, people search. For instance, if we want to use it for creating an employee directory, that is uh, one option where we had have uh, additional information that we would like uh, to provide for our end users. And also, for instance, in this case, uh, filters uh, specified uh, as per what we already have. Another option could be to use PMP Modern Search to create a department site where all of the employees is automatically shown on the, in, in one of the web parts. We don't have to do any updates because it's all uh, based on the user profiles, which are updated from the HR system or from your uh, Active Directory intra nowadays. Another example could be if we have additional uh, custom properties we would like to show, like the nationality of people, perhaps an employee number, perhaps some, in this case, a security clearance level, whatever uh, kind of specific properties that you would like to, to surface on, uh, on the user's uh, profile card. That kind of information, that kind of uh, properties is not yet available uh, in uh, the out of the box solution. So that's uh, one of the reasons why we use uh, PMP Modern Search. Likewise, in this case, birthdays and anniversaries, well, we have other web parts that can do that, but they are, most, most of the time, they are custom uh, developed for that specific purpose. We don't have to uh, develop anything here. We can just create a few search queries, and that should do the trick. So the question is, if you start looking into the options that we have with PNP Modern Search, should we use SharePoint as a search source or should we use Microsoft Search as a, as a source? When we're dealing with uh, people search, the answer is not it depends because uh, Microsoft Search can't provide the information we are looking for uh, yet. It's, the, it's coming, it's for sure. In this case, we have a new site created for one of our uh, offices in this company. And they are, in this case, based out, out of uh, Avignon in uh, France. So we would really like to show uh, the people um, uh, based in Avignon on this uh, page. 
So let's see if we can add uh, some clarity to that. Uh, see, the first thing we have to do is to see if we have those uh, web parts installed at all. We do not. How to install the web parts on the site collect, uh, sorry, on the tenant is something that we have another video for. So I would recommend that you have a look at that one. However, in order to add uh, the web parts uh, to this site, in this case, we have to go into the app catalog on this one and add the PMP modern search version four. That's important. We have an old version called version three. Do not use that one. Uh, that's only for, for legacy. So let's add that one. Take a few seconds for that to be updated. So there it is. So back to Avignon. And uh, let's add a web part up here. We have these as a, as that's offering. Uh, we have the search vertical, which is mostly used when we have multiple uh, result sets to work with. The filters, the search box kind of explains itself. And the result web part is the one we need here. So when we go in here and configure this one, we have the option whether we should use SharePoint search or we should Microsoft search. In this case, when we're dealing with people search, it's SharePoint search. Down here is where we have the, our basic uh, query. In this case, uh, we just starts with uh, just a wildcard just to just see every user. In order to make sure that we'll see our uh, user profiles, not everything else, we can change it down here in the result source uh, select box where we can select either SharePoint uh, results, which is just uh, everything but people. But what we want to see here is local people results. So if we select that and apply our template up here, we start seeing people showing up here. But it doesn't really look like uh, what we are used to. Well, we'll come back to that. There's additional settings like how should we sort the results that we get back. We can define that on first name, last name, how many years they've been in the company, and so on and so forth. Um, but that is not something we'll uh, have a look at in this case. As you can see, there's a lot of options that we can we can use for here uh, and they're used for, for, for refining the experience with these web parts. But the one we want to see is on page two. And that is which layout we want to use. We want to use the people layout. Now it starts looking like something. This one is if you want to edit the uh, the layout that we have, you can modify it and make it uh, look uh, to, uh, to to a specific uh, according to a specific uh, requirements. If you need to do that, that's however more and more as an advanced uh, subject. So what we want to do here is that. We want to see what's called a persona card on hover. If we turn that on and we go over here and hover the mouse over one of these people, you see this card show up. This is all of the uh, properties that we have available for that uh, person, just like you see everywhere else in the in the solution Microsoft is providing. This, this is based on, on what's called graph. The other thing we would like to see here is that we would like to see the extra large component size. So it's uh, even larger than what we see here. As you can see, there's a lot of them that doesn't have a, a profile picture yet, but we'll come back to that. These are mostly um, external users. These are guests, basically, but we'll filter them out later on. So up here, we can connect to a... Um, search box if we had one in this case or a filter or another uh, a search vertical or we can even uh, connect to another result web part but that is uh, all of a more advanced stuff so what we would like to see is how does this look when we just see it as it is here we can see there's a lot of people and we have a opportunity to browse and now it starts looking better because these are uh, not guests these are uh, the actual uh, members or so sorry uh, the the user pro the users which are on this tenant so these are the ones we want to see not uh, everybody else and also um, when we look at this for instance we can uh, sometimes see um, meeting rooms uh, and common uh, properties that is for some reason uh, in the in the uh, user profiles. 
So we have a lot of uh, people here. We would like to to filter those uh, further because we only want to see the people that was from Avignon. So how do we do that? Well, you have to know your data in order to 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 filter um, this. So we'll go into our user profiles, which is in the admin center, and we would like to see what kind of uh, data we have available for, for this one. In this case, we would like to see what we have for Adele. And you can see uh, that when, um, when it pops up that we have a lot of different uh, properties on Adele that could serve as a filter uh, for how to uh, just show the people that we are looking for. You can see first name, last name, all of these properties, and you can use those uh, to to filter out or exclude people if you want to. Now we have something called office location. And that is actually, in her case, uh, set to Avignon. So that is just the one we want to use. So let's go back and have a look in the search area. There we can see we have something called a search schema. A search schema is basically uh, the description of what we have in our search uh, results. So let's have a look. Let's see what we have for something called location. So what we have, we have something called base office location. Hmm. And it's related to people in some way. Uh, the name is SPS location. That could be the one. Let's see, base office location, right. So if we go back to our search here and see what happens if we change, we have a built-in uh, debugger actually in the, in the web parts, which we can use. Uh, otherwise, there are two more tools that yeah, you can use something called SP Editor and something called the SharePoint uh, Search Query tool. And if you would like to know something about those, you can either look in our documentation or try to Google it. But if we go into our debug setting here and see what we can find here, base office location, nothing on that one. Nothing on that one. Well, perhaps we should start by limit our result to just what we have on a Dell. We do that just by updating the search query. So now we only see the data related to, to Adele. Let's see what we have here. We have a job title and work phone and so on and so forth. There's a lot of data on this one. Well, we can't really see anything related to Avignon and base office location. Hmm. That is most likely because we don't have that field in the data set that we get back from uh, from the backend. This is related to these selected properties. This list of properties here is what we get back from the API. So let's see if base office location is here. It is not. Okay. And it's not even in the list. So, well, we can just add it by typing. That's, now it's on the list. Hey, what was that? Base office location actually just popped up and it does have a value, uh, the value Avignon. So perhaps if we go up here and we say, I'm looking for base office location, and it must contain the value Avignon. Contains in uh, this link, query language is a uh, colon, and then we say Avignon. Okay, let's try to apply that. And two results. Okay. Let's change from the debug to people search to see who is actually there. So it's Lee and it's Adele. Those people are the ones who are based in our uh, office in Avignon. So that's basically it. If we publish now, we can just say up here, 
remember that. Employees in area like that. So now we can see who's actually in the office, um, in the Avignon office, and if we get um, additional members of uh, the staff in Avignon, they will automatically pop up here because this this is based on the user profile data, which again is uh, synced from um, perhaps on-prem AD or from the cloud AD, uh, which is now called Intra. So this maintains itself. You don't have to uh, update it at all. That is just one way to, to work with the people search. Let's try another uh, scenario. Uh, right, out, right here, we have a uh, skills uh, to portal where people can uh, search by their, for their colleagues with have uh, particular skills. So let's try to make a search page for this purpose. So a new page, basic, so on and so forth. We'll add a new section. This uh, one third is often used because we can have our results on the right and we can have our um, search box and our refiner uh, on the left. But that's just a question of taste, basically. So let's go up here, say we're using SharePoint. Remember to change the resource source to local people results. And we want to see everything for the time being. So something is showing up and we would like to see the people layout and we would like to see the hover card, and we would like to see extra large um, layouts. This, In this case, we have to go on page three to connect to our search box and to our refiner. So we want to connect to the search box up here. We want to use the search term used up here. So that would be from the search box. We want to use the search query, and we want to do, use a default value. In this case, we'll just use um, a wildcard. We also want to connect to a filter, and it can pick out which one we are talking about. So that's it. So far, so good. Uh, what we want to look for, and um, what we want to provide over here is a um, Refiner, which will allow us to select between the various skills that people have. Skills is a property that we have on our users. For instance, in this case, this is Adele. She has a number of skills here. So um, she's apparently worked with marketing and campaign campaigns uh, earlier. So therefore, we can see those on her um, user property. So we know we are looking for something called skills. So let's go to manage properties in uh, the admin center and look for skills. And if we do a search, we can see that we actually do have a property just called skills. Uh, however, it's not refinable. And it has to be refinable in order for us to work uh, with, um, with the refiner. That's a, that's a basic requirement. So in this case, we will have to uh, do something uh, which you'll often have to do when you're dealing with refiners. We have to look for refinable strings. And do a mapping, which basically means that we'll take the crawl property, which is uh, also to do with skills. So let's see. I might even have made that. Mapping earlier, yep, it's right here. I've made this, uh, mapped this crawl property called people SPS skills. I've mapped that to the refinable string seven, which makes it easier for us because it takes some time for, for that mapping to take effect. But let's just pretend that we haven't had that one. So I'll show you how to uh, map that. We take a refinable string 180, 18 and select that one. 
and we go in this case we go down here to add a mapping and it takes some time uh, these uh, old screens are uh, pretty slow sometimes see we will look for skills in the crawl property the one we, we know what the one we're looking for is called something to people and sps skills this is the one we want to map to our refinable string so let's do that and save it however in this case we were uh, lucky that i already uh, made that uh, mapping uh, prior so we can use it right away otherwise you'll have to wait for it to show up and it can easily take up to a day uh, sometimes you're lucky it will take a couple of hours and then it's there otherwise you'll have to wait for uh, up to 24 hours so uh, let's have a look what is that new page there we are so we want to look for the refinable string what was it 107 up here one that was already mapped to um, skills 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 there just refinable string uh, 07 so we will take it up here and see if that property is in the selected properties it has to be otherwise we can't use it for the refiner so let's have a look. I have a lot of properties here. And no, refinable string 07 is not here. Well, we can just add it by typing it. Like that, now it's here, which means that it is pulled from the API we have it available in our results source, so if we want to show it, we could do that. And it will also now be available for our refiner. In our refiner, we go over here and have a look. We can, in this one, we have to map it back again. So this component is mapped to the refiner. The refiner has to be mapped to uh, the results source as well. So like that. And then we can edit which uh, refiners we want to have. I want to have one called skills and the filter value that I'm uh, using active in this case is actually the refinable string 07. I want to display that uh, um, the choices that we have presented with in some way. Uh, it can be a checkbox, it can be a combo box, it depends on uh, what uh, fits your requirements. Uh, we can open it by default if we want to. We can do it here. We can also make it multi-selection, so which means that I can select either this one or that one, and then I can uh, set operators on it. So I can say it has to be this and this and this. Otherwise, uh, I can also just use or. So I can combine my, uh, my, my uh, final search query. So let's just take it as there. By the way, you can also sort it. So if we have a number of options available, um, in this case, they, they are sorted alphabetically um, ascending. It can also be by OL property if we want to. So it shows up, which means that we have some data that is uh, it's OK. So let's try to save this one and see uh, how. Search and save it as a draft. So now we see all our uh, users and we want to search by skills. And this is the skills that are available right now. So if I want to see anybody who knows something about PMP Modern Search Web Parts, wait, how strange that just happened to be me. And if we're looking for somebody who knows nothing about marketing, it will be Adele. So this is a very easy way to uh, add our users in their quest to find the data that they are looking for. So that was two examples on how you can use uh, PMP Modern Web Parts uh, for people search. And um, 
if you need additional uh, inspiration, for instance, uh, I'd suggest that you visit our uh, documentation site or our home site here, because we have a lot of uh, different scenario tutorials over here, well, including, for instance, how to use people search uh, for uh, the various uh, purposes like uh, a repartment uh, finder or uh, likewise. We also have additional information as far as uh, if you are on the GitHub site, we can also uh, in the uh, discussions area that this is a great place to look for inspiration because there's a lot of your colleagues that have asked a question on how can I do this or that. And uh, if it's the answer is not here already because well, nobody ever asked that question yet, I suggest that you just ask us here because uh, we are pretty, uh, pretty good at uh, coming back with an answer to you, or at least a suggestion on how you can approach your your current issue. Um, and also, if you uh, need uh, to to do something like that, uh, and you would like to have a one-on-one uh, -on -one session uh, about this, we have something called the PNP Modern Search uh, Office Hours, which is where you can sign up uh, for a time slot each uh, second week, every, every second week, uh, we offer uh, some time uh, for uh, inspiration, debugging, and so on. So where we can set up a Teams meeting and uh, we'll try to assist you with your issue. I hope you have found this uh, informative and uh, it will help you on your uh, work with PNP and button search. Thank you. Thank you.